Have you ever wondered how a person with disability could use a touchscreen device like an iPhone or an iPad if they lack the movement to be able to reliably touch the screen? Well, Switch Control is a free and included accessibility feature that Apple introduced into their iOS in 2013 with iOS version 7. And it allows a user to interact with an Apple device without needing to directly touch the screen, instead using an external device like a jelly bean button, sip and puff switch, or even a wheelchair joystick as their input device. Such an external device can be connected via cable or Bluetooth and can mimic regular screen touches by controlling a movable on-screen selector in a process traditionally referred to in the disability community as switch scanning. While it can be a cumbersome way to use a smart device, it does go pretty close to providing full access to all functions and features of an iPhone or an iPad. There's not much you can't do with it, in one way or another, so long as you're determined and patient. Apple's iOS includes other alternative access methods, such as voice control or just simply use of a mouse. But sometimes these aren't suitable, and switch control is still the best option. There are two main ways to use switch control. The first is called item mode, and with this method the on-screen selector, which is referred to as a cursor, hops between the various selectable elements available on the screen. When the appropriate on-screen element is highlighted, the user can operate their external button to make a selection. If the selector makes it all the way to the bottom of the screen without a selection being made, it will return to the top for another pass. This method works well in many scenarios, but becomes time-consuming when there are a large number of elements on the screen particularly if you miss the desired element on the first pass and have to wait for it to loop through again. The alternative method is called gliding cursor, which aims to establish an XY coordinate on the screen using gliding crosshairs. First, the system provides a macro selector that moves horizontally. A button activation stops the macro selector and provides a fine selector. Another button activation finalizes the horizontal selection position and provides the macro selector for the vertical position, followed by a fine selector for vertical position, and then finalization of the vertical position to provide a final XY coordinate, at which point the system generates a tap. In all, this requires four to five button activations for every tap, and this laboriousness is the main downside of this method compared to item mode, which requires one to two button presses. The upside, however, is that you don't need to wait for the element to be highlighted with the cursor. You can just go straight to it. The other upside is that some apps are poorly designed and make it difficult for the operating system to identify selectable elements that's needed for item mode. So with gliding cursor, it will work in any environment, whereas item mode will only work on apps that have been well designed. There are a number of settings within switch control which can be used to provide quite flexible customization, and it's worth playing around with the various options to find what works best. What you can see on the screen at the moment are what I think are the best settings for a first timer. This configuration provides a new user with an easy, manageable introduction to switch control, but leaves them without access to some of the more advanced actions that are available inside the scanner menu. So once the user has grasped manual scanning, and can handle a bit more complexity, I think these settings are the next step up. With these settings, the user can now access the scanner menu, which is a context menu similar to right-clicking in Windows. With the configuration I've now set, I can access the scanner menu by doing a long press whenever the cursor is moving. So you can see here some of the actions that are available, like scrolling, pressing the home button, performing gestures, switching between item mode and gliding cursor mode, and plenty of others. This menu is affected by context, so you can see that when I'm in a context where scrolling is relevant, I have access to the scroll item. But if I go home, now scrolling disappears from the menu. Some actions are buried a bit behind other menu items, so sometimes it can take some digging to find the action that you want. You can see here that the lock screen action is accessed by going to device in the root menu. Another useful feature built into switch control is called recipes. 
I won't go into how these are set up, but this feature allows the user to temporarily change what happens when they press their input button. Whereas a particular button might usually be assigned to select, by activating a recipe, that button could be reassigned to, say, a screen swipe. This could be a really useful way to use a reading app, for example, as the button could be used to trigger a page turn. So that's it. There's a lot more to switch control than what I've covered here, but this was just meant as a quick overview of what switch control is and what it can do. And big ups to Apple for implementing such powerful accessibility tools in their operating system. They really deserve a lot of credit for getting it right. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, as that will tell YouTube's algorithms that it was a good video, and that other people should see it too. And by all means, leave a comment down below.